Good evening. I'd like to convene the meeting of the Public Services Subcommittee uh, for November 19th, Thursday, November 19th. Current, uh, currently, we have the committee members, Council Chires, Gould, Melville, and Matsoulis present, um, as well as the remainder of the council. All 11 councils are here, and we're here to discuss a motion filed by Council Sasslaw at the last meeting to have uh, Public Services Director Bob Labossiere present to discuss the Peabody uh, water project in its status as well as uh, preparations for the upcoming snow season. So with that, I'll defer to Council Sasslaw. Thank you, Chairman Turco. Um, so thanks for showing up, Bob, appreciate it. And uh, basically, uh, I think the motion speaks for itself. Maybe you can talk a little bit about it and then I actually might have a couple of specific questions to a couple of different neighborhoods, uh, but we can get into that after your opening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillors. Um, I'm happy to say that the project is substantially complete. Um, contract number one, which is the South Peabody um, section of the water main project, that's between Brown, Brown Street, up Norfolk, to summit all the way down the off ramp of 128 out to Lowell Street. That project is completed. The pipes, all the services are all in and it's active. Um, the last two weeks, the contractor has been in milling the trenches and doing his final pavement. Um, today they were on Norfolk. They're in the Norfolk Brown area. That's the last piece they have to fix. Um, and then they'll be completed in its entirety. Um, the first contract number one is Rivoli that started on Route 1. It went down Clark Road to Peabody Road and Lowell Street out to 128. That project has completed all pipe work, all service connections. That main is, is on in all sections. Um, they've been removing all the bypass um, lines that have been out and down Lowell Street. Um, they were doing their final patching today of their trenches. Um, they have a few small um, disconnections of higher hydrants and <clears throat> they disconnected the, there was an old pump station that was underneath the sidewalk down between Ferry Street to each connection to the high school. They uh, removed that today. And then on the week of November 30th, um, the contractor will be in to Mill Lowell Street where they're gonna start at PBD Road and go out to 128. They're gonna get as much as that road done as they can weather dependent. Um, they're gonna mill all the trenches and do their final pavement as well. And then next year, next spring, um, the city's gonna come in, we're gonna mill curb to curb, um, do all the handicap ramps in the area and then repave all of Lowell Street. Well, we're gonna repave all the roads that the water mains were down. So that would be starting at Lynn Street down Brown, all the way through all the uh, roads that were disturbed with the water main project. Um, the pump house itself is completed as well. We've run through all the trial um, operations of that station. It, it looks good. It's, everything was operating correctly. Um, they're working on a final computer software design to, for the pumps themselves. Um, that should be completed this week. Um, we've done some early testing of all the valves that need to be closed. So we'll be closing all the valves that will isolate the high pressure zones. Um, and we anticipate a letter going out to all the properties that will be affected for pressure. We have a list of all those properties that will have a pressure um, difference. Um, it's not a, you know, it'll be very noticeable to those homeowners, um, but it's not a huge increase in pressure. It's between 15 and 30 pounds, which can be significant to some of the people out there considering the pressures that are low. Um, but we anticipate turning the pumps on and slowly, it's gonna, it's gonna take a month or so to get those pumps up to full operation because we don't wanna you know, turn the pumps on all at once and disturb the, the whole system. So slowly we're gonna ramp those pumps up and turn down the Winona treatment plants. So those operations can't happen all at once. We have to slowly turn the, the pumps on and slowly turn the plant off so that we can have a better system. Um, but I'm open to any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Labossia. So um, starting off, you left off regarding the, the booster pump. So 
so specifically some neighborhoods like Brooksby Farm, um, Good, Gooddale Street and jo Jordan Acres, and then further west, Catherine Drive. So those areas, is it, if I heard you correctly, so basically by January 1st, do you think they'll all be up and running and seeing an increase in water pressure? I can tell you Brooksby Farm, but, but Good Deal Circle and Catherine Drive aren't part of this high zone area. I heard Brooksby so Farm, I, I'm sorry, what was the other piece? The, uh, the other neighborhoods that you mentioned weren't part of this high pressure zone. So Gooddale Street is not gonna see an increase in pressure in that area? They probably will not, no. Okay, I, I'm surprised to hear that because at one point we're talking about putting the the booster uh, right next to the high school and then you moved it down a little bit and I thought it was going to. So what about as far as the Route 1 corridor? Will that see an increase in water pressure at all? Yeah, Route 1 definitely will be. Yep, that's, that's so the pressure zone will be on the western side of Route 1. Um, so everything along the Route 1 um, corridor will all have an increase in pressure, yes. Okay. Maybe well, shutting off valves, and don't quote me here. I don't have the uh, I don't have the final map from our consultant yet. Um, but they'll be around, like the Pine Pine Street area. A couple of those side streets will be closing valves to to isolate uh, a zone. But I'll have some better information on that, and in, you know, probably the end of next week. Okay. If you could look into that, because. Uh, not to ask a question being self-serving, but if you talk about Gooddale Street and Crane Ave and Martin Circle and Benevento Circle, um, those, I've been there since 1996 and the water pressure has always been extremely weak and I was certainly on the impression that, they also call it Jordan Acres, that those neighborhoods were going to see an increase. So if you, if you could uh, get back on that, I would appreciate that. Um, and I understand that it's all being done in, in piecemeal. Um, as far as the paving, just so I understand, you talked about uh, milling from Peabody Street down to say uh, 128. So I heard you say in the springtime it'll be curb to curb. So that the milling and the paving they're gonna do now, and that's a pretty tough area from, like I said, Peabody Road all the way down to uh, 128. I mean, it's, it's, it's very rough. So is they, are they not gonna go curb to curb, but will, they, will the residents see you a little bit I guess I'll let you explain what are they going to do to try and make that situation better than it is right now. So the contractor is responsible for the trenches that he dug up. So all the water main trenches where the water main itself went in and all the service to cross service connections. He'll be milling out all those trenches and putting in four inches of asphalt um, with a machine. So it'll be nice and smooth. Um, I don't know if you've been down Summit Street. Um, since the other contractor did it, but it'd be very similar to that. It's a much, much different surface. Okay, yeah, so, so I, someone did reach out to me and ask about Summit Street. So Summit Street has been, it, that's been done? Yep, yep, they just did it, yep. Great, um, and then regarding um, the entrance to the Centerfield neighborhood, well, uh, I know we've talked about it in the past, but uh, is it, when is the, gonna, the equipment gonna be out of there, the porta potties? Uh, when is that stuff all going to be finally removed? So most of the equipment is out of there. There is a porta potty there now, um, just because the contractors are still working. Um, but they'll probably be gone probably within the next week or two. That's great. Very good. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to, feel free to uh, talk a little about um, the upcoming season. How you looking for? Uh, operations for sea and salt, private contractors, if you want to maybe touch upon that, if you could. Sure. Uh, Council, um, excuse me, for, excuse me, Bob, for one second. Council says yep. on, the, on the water subject, can we see if any other councilors have uh, questions about the water project? Mr. Chairman. Council Charest. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Bob, thank you for being here. The, um, when you talked about, and, and thank you for staying on, on this water project, it's, um, my ward certainly, Brooksby Farm certainly had the, uh, their fair share of low water pressure. So when you talk about 15 to 30 pounds uh, increase, that's significant because a lot of them don't even have 15 pounds. So uh, I do appreciate, thank you uh, for getting on this and, and keeping it uh, moving right along. So you did mention that um, you're gonna be turning the pumps 
on and building up the pressure. And I'm assuming that's because you don't want to put the pressure right on and blow the lines at any linkages that we have, correct? So correct. I, w I yep. want people to understand that's the reason why you have to go real slow is you don't want to burst anything that we uh, just replaced. But you also said that you would have a list of um, streets that will be seeing some uh, increase. Could you possibly send that to us too? Um, yep. That way that when we get phone calls, um, some people can say, hey, I live on such and such street, and I haven't seen any increase. We can say, well, that wasn't part of the increase uh, pressure list that we would have. So we could maybe field some um, phone calls uh, that way, I would I would appreciate oh, it. I, I will have, I will have a list of every property that will be within this pressure zone. Um, we have a an elevation of every property, so we can we'll have an idea of what the difference in pressure will be at each specific house. That'd be great. So I can get that for you. Yeah, that'd be really helpful. And thank you. And again, I I, I drove down Summit Street just um, the other day, and you you can see it where the new pavement is. And when you're driving to it, you think you're gonna feel that difference between the new pavement and the old one. And you really, you can't. It's, it really is smooth. It was actually enjoyable. Um, and so I'm hopefully that's gonna be the same on Lowell Street. I know we spoke earlier uh, to have the, the a similar patchwork uh, that was done on Summit because it was, uh, it was done nicely. So uh, thank you. And I'll- So j just to add one piece too, we do anticipate there being some water main breaks once we turn this uh, pump station on. Um, we're gearing at, up to be ready for that. Um, it's very typical in situations like this where you have older piping and you bring in a new pump system and you, in, you change the difference in pressures in the line. Um, so we are ready to handle that when, if, if and when it's necessary. Yeah, I, I assume you would have some, uh, but you're trying to limit the, the ones you anticipate, so. Uh, yep. Again, thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. And I know we have Councilor Gould and Councilor Welton in the waiting, but if you don't mind deferring to the mayor for one moment, uh, Mayor Bencourt. Thank you, uh, Chairman Turco. And uh, Bob did an outstanding job uh, explaining where we are. Uh, certainly, we've been getting a great deal of calls, as I'm sure all of you are. Um, the condition of the road has been a big one in, in Lowell Street. Uh, in particular, it's been rough driving for a few months now during this course of this project. I would have loved to have been able to tell you that we can pave now curb to curb, but because when the, the main was laid down, um, the sediment around the main has to solidify, and that takes time for it to solidify. So we can't pave for a few months until uh, the springtime uh, to fully pave curb to curb and do the, the real work that needs to be done, the real paving that needs to be done. So this will kind of carry us through, hopefully, through the winter. I think you're going to see a, a market improvement on Lowell Street, uh, but it's just something we're going to have to get through for these next few months. And uh, come springtime, we already have the funding uh, that was voted on by all of you previously, so we have the funding put aside for the paving. We'll be able to jump on it so we don't have to wait for funding. With our Chapter 90 funding, we typically, typically have to wait on that. We don't get that till to July, June, July, uh, sometimes even later. But this money for the paving for Lowell Street, Summit Street, um, the piece of Linfield onto Norfolk, onto Maple, onto Brown, that will, uh, we already have that funding for that. So we'll be able to jump on that as soon as the weather allows. And Bob and I and Mike Jingus, we've already been planning to, to, to get the um, contracts and everything done so that work can take place as soon as possible. Um, so this is just trying to make it last as best we can uh, for these few months to carry us over to the springtime. And I just want to make sure I, I added that in um, uh, to Bob's summary of things. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think the mayor just clarified it for me, um, not to be redundant, but we're, we're going to mill and do the trenches and then come back in the spring, Bob, and do the entire street. Yes, that's correct. Um, so they put in a temporary patch after they do their water main. So they only put in about two inches of asphalt. So if I came in and milled curb to curb, I'd pull out all the asphalt that they had put in and we wouldn't have a base. Okay. Cool. So within the bid, they're required to come back after 90 days and do this milling and paving. 
that's what we paid for that's within the bid so right. i want to make sure the contractor does everything they're supposed to so that we're not shorted in the end with the amount of asphalt in in the road i'm i'm sure the residents of Peabody will be very glad when lowell street's done thank you and thank you for your help with sparrow lane extension i appreciate yep. it you all thank you no further questions mr chairman thank you thank you council welton Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Bob. Um, first off, thank you very much for all of your efforts to get this project wrapped up. Um, just on behalf of some of our uh, business neighbors on Summit and Linfield, I just want to confirm we're done the work there. There's no more road closures until um, the paving will resume in the spring. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. And um, just do you have a ballpark for about how long the paving on Summit Street um, will take? It, it, it's a lot of road between Lynn Street to Route 1. It's a lot of road to mill and pave. Um, I have a meeting that we're going to set up with the milling company and the paving company in December to go over how we're going to sequence this. Um, we're going to start on the South Peabody side because that's been done longer um, and probably work our way out to Route 1. Um, but I'll, I'll have a better understanding of that in the... Um, this winter, but it, it'll be Summit Street itself, you know, it'll be a, probably two or three days of milling and probably two days of paving. Um, but we're going to try to come up with a, a sequence where we can do one lane first so that we can still have open traffic and then do this, the second lane afterwards. Great, thank you. And if, if I could just make the suggestion as we get closer, if you could share that uh, with the abutters and the businesses there, I know that they would very much appreciate that so they can plan accordingly. But, uh, but thank Absolutely. you again. Yep. Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Chairman Turco. Uh, through you, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Labosse here if um, just two parts. Uh, the Winona plant, we, we already approved the special permit to have that uh, plant, uh, you know, basically rehabbed and, and, and th that construction part. How long will it be offline and will we have to tie into the MWRA uh, or will we be just using the Coolidge plant as a supply during that, you know, I guess having the plant come offline? So we do have a connection to the MWRA um, that we do supplement water with. Um, we are very low on our water supply at all of our reservoirs. So we are currently using quite a bit of MWRA water just because we're, we're low on our source water. Um, I don't know if anyone has gone by Winona Pond or Suntog or Springs, but we are extremely low on our water. Um, come December 1st, we can turn the pumps on from the Ipswich River and start filling up uh, Sumtog and Winona. Um, but we, it, the contract only allows the plant to be shut down for four months. So it'll be January, February, March, and April. Um, and then we'll be turning it on for the higher seasons um, come May 1st. Um, I don't anticipate us using, you know, an exorbitant amount of MWA water. I think it's during our low use season. So Coolidge should be able to hold, uh, keep up with it, uh, but we do have the MWRA there just in case we need it. Thank you. That helps provide uh, more information. I just, I got nervous. I hear MWRA and you know, wonderful water source, and I know we have as an emergency backup, but then I thought about the Coolidge, you know, shut down and just got nervous about the additional costs that come with that. Um, last question I have is just, in, you know, almost touching on, uh, through uh, Mr. Chairman, we'd like to just ask the question regarding the water pressure. I know this is just an all-encompassing project throughout the city and will help everyone, not in, uh, you know, not including having better water supply and quality and, and a complete rehab of the Winona, but I guess how do we look to the future of making sure those streets that are on the western part of Peabody, uh, end of Ward 6, if you will, um, Catherine Drive, Maryvale, sorry, um, you know, the water just trickles out of those, you know, sinks um, and, and their, their showers, it's like, a, you know, a, a rain bucket dropping on them. So how do we look to the future to make sure that they get the water pressure that other now residents are gonna see in the future? Thank you. Well, the, the, the water in that section of town by Catherine, is, is, it's driven off of the uh, Presidential Heights water tank. Um, my understanding, I've only been in the job for two and a half years, but my understanding is that years ago when they tried to get the Presidential Heights tank in, they wanted to go higher to increase water pressure out there. Unfortunately, that tank 
you know, wasn't able to be built higher. The residents in that area didn't want it at a certain elevation and that limited the pressure that was being distributed. So that would have to be another item that we'd have to consider down the road of how to increase pressure in those areas. Thank you, I appreciate that. No further questions. Thank you. Before I defer back to Council Sasslaw, um, Bob, just one quick question. Where are we on the budget for this project? Are we within budget? Um, all the way, I know there were some issues. Yeah, no, as, as of right now, we haven't completed all the change orders. Um, there's quite a few change orders. Not, I shouldn't say quite a few, but there have been some substantial change orders because the large pipe in Lynn Street, um, those valves were, were over 100 years old and weren't operational, so we weren't able to close the, the main down to make it a connection. So we had to do a line stop, which is an expensive um, proposition. Um, it was very interesting. It was the first time I had ever seen a line stop on a line that that big. Um, but there, so we had some of those items, but adding up all that together, we will still be under budget. That's good to hear. With that, I'll defer back to Council of Sassler. We can talk snow. Thank you, Council Turco. Uh, I just had one, one last question, Bob. I forgot to ask about the neighborhood of rolling hills. Will they see an increase with the water pressure with the booster there, do you know? That I will have to check on. Um, I'm trying to remember how far up the um, that pressure zone goes, but I'll have to let you know. I'll get back to you on that. No problem, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, yes, as far as the snow operations, I just was just um, kind of figured it's actually a pretty good time right now as far as where you are, as far as um, so sand and salt. I know we got two new sidewalk plows last year and I don't think uh, we had to use them too much and I hope we don't have to use them too much this year, but just maybe you want to give us an overview as far as how you're looking and if you need any help up there, if you're looking for private contractors still and anything that we need to know about or help you out with. Um, we are always looking for private contractors. We um, are under the amount we had last year. We had quite a few contractors not come back this year um, and that's just not in PBD. It's a problem that they're facing throughout the whole area. Um, COVID-19 hit and a lot of contractors just couldn't keep their equipment maintained um, or just couldn't afford to, to keep their equipment up and what and the insurances and whatnot. So we are a little bit lower on private contractors right now. So we're still taking applications for anybody and anybody who, who would like to plow for the city. Um, our equipment is all set to go. Um, we've already been out once, unfortunately, already. Um, everything seemed to work pretty well. Um, we have a full shed of salt right now, so we, we are prepared at any time to, to, to answer the storms. That, that's great news. If someone is interested, how would they go about contacting uh, your department to uh, inquire about plowing? So they can just give us a call um, on, our, on our DBS line. Um, Kevin Kelly, the assistant director, and John Keon, who's the garage um, supervisor, they will be able to help them out. Did you want to, in the interest of a plug, you want to say what that number is? I don't know actually off the top of my head what it is. Um, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't <laughs> know what it is off the top of my head either. Well, we'll work on that, all right. And thank th you. No problem. And thanks once again for all your efforts with both projects. I really do appreciate it, Bob, all the work you put in. Thank you. Thank you. Any councils with questions about snow? Uh, Councilor McGinn and then Councilor Rosigal, who I missed on water, can ask about water and snow after that. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to Director Labossier. Uh, Mr. Labossier, just, I just want to confirm there's no change in the process uh, for communications on inquiries. You want everything to go to Mr. Kelly and he'll direct that internally. Is that right? Uh, for snow operations? Correct. Yeah, yep, that would be fine. Yeah, Just, uh, that was the protocol. I mean, in the, in the past, sometimes uh, we were told who the uh, area supervisors were and everything, but I think last year you were encouraging us to channel everything through Kevin, and I am assuming. Yeah, it makes it easier for Kevin, yeah. yeah, so he knows what each supervisor is doing. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Rosignol. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Mr. Lavoisier. First of all, thank you very much for all your hard work on this project. This is uh, certainly a daunting task that, you, that we've undertaken as a city. Um, and when it's completed, it's going to be um, great for all of the residents. The one question I had regarding water, are, are you, um, as they're doing this project, are you coming up with a detailed map of where all of the shutoffs and all the connections and, and where the exact lining is so that fast forward 20, 60 years from now, when you need to shut off a specific area, you know exactly where that shut off is and there's no confusion of digging in one spot because you thought it was here and it's actually in a completely different location? Yes, we have um, all ties to every single shut off that was put in, um, very detailed ties to it. Um, and then there will be an as-built plan that puts it all together in one, one area for us. Perfect, thank you. And it's all my, part of the, um, the consultant's job as, as uh, construction services. Excellent. And then my only question regarding snow, will, will we be getting updates of when the plows are going out um, as was previously done? Yes, you can, yep. Thank you. Would you, does, do all the councils want it still by text? I, I know some didn't, some do. I'll speak for myself. The way that you handled it last winter, I thought was perfect. Okay, I'll let Kevin know. Okay. Thank you. Council Charest. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, just on that topic about um, the info coming out to us about, you know, at five o'clock, the plows are gonna go out or the sand is going out. I, 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 that's just super, it's, it's so helpful because I know I get calls to say, you know, what can I do, what should I do, are they coming out and this and that. And it is, it is really is helpful. I'm sure it's more work for you folks, uh, Kevin Kellen, uh, to do it. But, you know, for, for one who's out the door at four o'clock in the morning, I know a couple of counselors are the same situation that sometimes being away from the city, we're not really sure uh, what's happening, how it's being handled because, you know, that line can come in uh, differently from town to town and really, you know, what it's, when I'm in Beverly and I'm not seeing anything, Peabody, it's adding up. So uh, I think that's super, I, I really do appreciate it. So please, please keep that up, uh, for me at least. Sure. Um, the other ones is that I, I believe, I, I'm getting old so I kind of forget if it's last year or the year before, uh, that we had a, a portal for people who could call in to say, um, my street was missed. I know sometimes people try to reach out to us and we may not be able to get, as a counselors, be able to get that phone call right away if, you know, one, if I'm in work, I've, I'm in the dead zone uh, where I'm at so my phone's not picking, in the mess, picking up the messages and things of that. But um, I do, did know you put it up, I think it was a portal, right, that people could call in and said, um, Franklin yep. Road is, is, is not passable, some, you know, whatever it is that you can direct your, um, foreman's out there to look at him. Am I correct? Well, yep, you are correct. So you're gonna have that up and going. I, we'll I have that set again this year, yep. Yeah, I won't ask you to uh, say that phone number just for, because um, you may not know it off the top of your head and I certainly don't know it. My, uh, but maybe at some point in time that could be released. Yeah, we can get way. it out to you. We'll put it on the website. Uh, and I appreciate that. And hopefully, again, we don't have as much snow as we had last year, so it was, it was pretty good. but. Um, I did see some nice trucks up there recently, so I'm sure you're equipped well to, uh, to handle it. And again, thank you uh, in, uh, in advance to all the uh, guys out there plowing and, and trying to keep the streets okay. open. Thank you. Thank you. If there are any councils who do not wish for us to um, text the information to you at all hours of the night, just throw me a note and um, we'll take you off the list. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. Bob, back to the uh, water tank that Councilor O'Neill referenced in Presidential Heights, or you spoke about. Is it the volume of water? Would an adjacent yep. would an adjacent tank of the same height work uh, somehow to alleviate that? Or no, it's it's all done by elevation, so it would be the height of the tank. Uh, that's the, what I'm saying. The, the height the of the size, tank. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any technological means to? boost it for the lack of a better phrase or you would have to put another booster station in isolated booster station in some other areas but um you know 
after we get everything up and running, um, we can go back and, and check. That. Okay. We can look at it in the future. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thanks, Chairman. And I just wanted to check with Councilor Matsoulis. Um, Councilor Matsoulis, any questions? I'm, uh, Council, no questions. I'll uh, the... No, I do. I do. Oh, Excuse you do? Me. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. You yep. have the floor. Yeah, I was uh, sitting back listening. My questions uh, have really been uh, answered when uh, Mr. Lavasia uh, first started talking, when he said we have a shortage. Usually, my, I ask the same questions every year about snow uh, removal. And one of them is that we're going to have the same people, uh, and the uh, snowplow workers, uh, doing the same streets. And the reason I ask that is I'm in the ward every day and I drive around the ward. And I'm usually in touch with the, uh, with the drivers. And there are some streets that they do a little extra for me. And when I say a little extra, not behind your back, uh, Mr. Lavoss. Right. Yeah, no, I know do. what you mean. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you know, they'll... Yep. They'll uh, uh, not put the snow in front of someone's house. That uh, right. okay. So I work very well with the drivers, and and you know they're very good to me. So, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, you kind of answered my question that I was going to add that that I asked. Are we going to have the same people back again? But you wouldn't know that because well, uh, you you have a shortage of drivers. So I can. Uh, I can tell you your area does have yeah. most of the drivers coming back. Oh, great, great. I, I, and the reason I say that, I could name the streets, you know, Northfield and Sparrow Lane and sure. all the cul-de-sacs in my ward, which I'm aware of because uh, you do a good job with it, and I appreciate that. And uh, one of the reasons I had mentioned this is, is – uh, uh, I really wasn't going to say anything, but people are watching this. So if there are people that uh, my neighbors uh, that are watching tonight and they're not getting that special treatment they got last time, it's because of uh, a driver that may not be there. And, right. and we'll we'll reintroduce that issue to you and the, and the sure. drivers, which I'm sure. And uh, while I have you here, I want to tell you, I want to thank the mayor, I want to thank you, and Tom Gould for taking care of Sparrow Lane. That was very important, and you guys did a good job. So Thank you. I look forward to working with you this winter, and thank you. Okay. Thank you. And seeing nobody else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Motion by Councilor Charest. Councilor Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Councilor Gould? Yes. Charest? Yes. Melville? Yes. Turco? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Thanks, Bob.